Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Psalm 27, verses 7 through 10. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. And my heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Psalm 27 begins as David is singing a hymn of praise to God for being his light and his salvation. David remembers all the things that God has done for him, and he expresses deep confidence that the Lord is with him no matter what. And now in the middle of this psalm, he uses that confidence as a basis for his prayer. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. One of the most beautiful things that we can take confidence is in is that the Lord hears us when we pray. He has promised to hear our prayers and more than that, to act on our prayers. The privilege that we have of going in front of the King of the universe with the petitions of our heart cannot be overstated. In ancient times, you couldn't approach the monarch without his specific invitation. And if you looked at him without his permission, you would have had your head cut off. And yet here we serve a gracious God who is king, but who has invited us to seek his face, to look him full in the eye, and to make our petitions boldly before him. This is a privilege that belongs to everyone who belongs to God in Christ. You know, oftentimes people say to me, well, I know since you're a pastor, you have a better connection to God than I do. And that's actually not true. Uh, it's like cell phone service. Everybody has it, but I'm guessing that some people use it more often than others. Everybody has the privilege of seeking God's face, and he has promised to hear us. David knows that he's not perfect. So he says, turn not your servant away in anger. Cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. He knows that he belongs to God. He knows that he is saved, but he also knows that he is far from perfect. He knows that God in his righteous judgment has every reason not to listen to David's petitions. And yet he is boldly coming before God with the prayer of his heart. He wants to see God face to face and be reminded that God is with him and will not forsake him. And then he says, for my father and mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. You know, even the best human relationships, even the best human family is going to fall short of our expectations and of our needs. We need for our parents to love us and to support us and nurture us and train us and sustain us. And many of us have been blessed with good families where this occurred. Many more, I'm afraid, have been not so blessed and have had to experience families where the parenting style was, to put it mildly, less than best. And it can be difficult for people to think of God as their father when their human father has been so deficient. And yet the promise that we have is that if we belong to God in Christ, the Lord himself is our father. And he gives us new family relationships as a result of his relationship to us. In the 12th chapter of Matthew, Jesus is speaking to the crowd and his mother and his brothers come to look for him. And Matthew records this. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. When we come to God through faith in Christ, we are adopted into the family of God. God himself is our father, and he blesses us with these new relationships, with new brothers and sisters and mothers and cousins and aunts and uncles. And we have a bond, frankly, that is stronger. It is stronger than any bond on earth. 
You know, people like to say the blood is thicker than water, but the truth is the water of baptism is stronger than any blood relationship. Now, sometimes we look around our churches and we look at the new family that God has given us and say, you know, I'm not so sure about this. Well, that's because none of us are perfect and God is not through with any of us yet, but he has promised to create a family for us to, that supersedes our natural family. It doesn't mean we have to kick our natural family to the curb, but when we feel that our natural family has failed us, God has provided a family for us. He himself is our loving father, and he has created for us a community that serves as our family, if we would just take advantage of it. We're not meant to do this Christian walk alone. This is not a solo sport. And so God creates a new family for us. And even when we feel that our natural family has forsaken us, we have a God-given family who will provide for us, pray for us, encourage us, lift us up and bear our burdens. And so we too will do for them. It is a powerful and beautiful thing to belong to the family of God. And as part of that family, we can go to our heavenly father who is the ruler of the universe with all the petitions of our heart and know that his face will shine upon us in grace and mercy and love. Treasure your heavenly family this day and treasure your freedom to come before God with all the petitions of your heart, knowing that he is your light and your salvation this day and every day. God's blessings be upon you.